ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Spodcast, where cartoons are no longer child's play. I'm Joe. I'm Shaul. I'm Alice. And with us we have our special guest. Me. Michael. <laughs> Hi. Uh, okay. Um, tonight's discussion is probably a discussion. We're going to be discussing Lady, uh, Miraculous Ladybug, which the trailer came out for it recently. Uh, then we're going to be talking about the new series, uh, which follows on from the uh, How to Train Your Dragon movies, The Dragon Riders of Burke. But first, I think uh, we need to give Mike the proper introduction. So... Oh, please don't. <laughs> um, You're under let's obligation. Hit... Uh, let's get your favourite series, then. Okay, okay. Uh, you want the... What's the first question, then? Uh, yeah, if we could go from all, uh, the order I've given you. Okay, then. Uh... Well, was the first one was uh, favorite uh, cartoon of the uh, first fo- uh, recent five years, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, to be honest, I had a, I had a lot of trouble with a lot, well, with most of the questions. To be fair, um, mainly because for these for these next two que- the first two questions, I wanted to plonk the same thing, but I thought that'd be quite dull. So, um, so for the first five years, I put Archer. Okay. Uh, that's been going since 2009, I believe. Might be 2008. And, um, yeah, no, Archer's really, really good. Uh, we, well, we watched, we saw the first episode at the Best of the West this year, didn't we, at the Anime Society? Mm. Yes. And, um, yeah, no, it was really good. The animation's great. Uh, voice acting's great. Um, stories are pretty damn good. Uh, Humor's hilarious. You know, there's nothing really that wrong about it. It's just, mm. yeah, just spot on, really. It's a nice riff on the sort of 60s era James Bond. But yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's got, you know, it's a nice little modern twist. Um, um, go on, next question. Uh, yeah, favourite series of the past, of the in the last decade? Okay, for that, definitely had to go straight with Adventure Time. I wanted to initially put Adventure Time as the first one, as uh, the best one of the five five years. But like I said, that'd be quite dull if I did it for both. So, yeah, well, yeah. Um, to anyone who's watched Adventure Time, I'm sure they'd understand what I'd say. What a claim it's the, well, my favourite. It's, yeah, no, it's great. It's, you know, it's, uh, it's got so much possibility, you know, it could just keep going years, and it'd still be entertaining as hell. I mean, it's work and it seems like it should be for kids and then you start watching it and you're like then if adults or well young adults you start to see like all the little hints and stuff all the little insinuations and it's just yeah it's brilliant you know the, the characters are so colorful and like some can be terrifying some can be entertaining and you know there's a nice little bit of romance in mike did you hear they've um confirmed they're going to do another fiona and cake episode oh have they Oh, right. Right. oh, yeah, that's it. Um, the Fiona and Cake episode was really, really good. Uh, for the, for the listeners, I suppose we ought to point out if you haven't if they haven't seen it, um, the Fiona Cake episode that we're on about. It's basically all the characters get gender swapped. All the guys become girls. All the girls become guys. Basically, Venom has a canon Rule sixty three episode, and instead of being the adventures of Finn the Human, Jake his trusty dog, it's. Fiona, the human, and her magical cat, Cake. And they are very adorable. They are so cute. Mm. And it's a very and good a... episode. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, 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 I, I'm sorry for interrupting you. Oh, no, it's fine. Um, good. And to be honest, me and some of my mates, me and some of my mates love it so much. Uh, we're actually going to Pulse Bakers Adventure Time Characters um, at the MCM in London in October. Uh, we do, on the first day we go in as regular characters, and the next day we go in as uh, gender swap characters. So like, for the first day, yeah, um, the first day I'm doing Simon, um, who turns out to be the Oz King. Spoiler alert. And um, for the gender swap, I'm doing Marshall Lee. So that should be fun. So if you're ever down in the MCM in London, you can go and poke My- Michael as either Simon or Marshall Lee. Though beware, if you're poking him as Marshall Lee, he does have an axe, which he does have a bass guitar, which is shaped like an axe. Yeah, true. Also, be sure not to poke all the Simons and Marshall Lees, because what if it turns out it's not Mike? 
That Johnny said, rather you didn't poke me anyway, you could just ask me, are you Michael? I could go, yes. Yeah, I'd rather not get poked, frankly. Okay. Favourite cartoons, a favourite cartoon series that's older than the decade? Oof. Well, then, there's, there's loads of choices to go with, well, for me, personally. Because these aren't what I consider, say, the best, but it's what I consider my, my favourite. I mean, you know, there are some amazing ones out there. Um, you know, some really influential ones. Uh, but for me, it was kind of coming down to either Rugrats, because I loved Rugrats as a kid. I had pretty much every VHS that was of it, like the sad I am. Um, Scooby-Doo, again, incredibly sad, and I had pretty much every VHS and most DVDs. I still have some DVDs. Um, but in the end, I went with Futurama, because, damn, Futurama is brilliant. It's amazing. It's entertaining as hell. Again, voice acting, brilliant. Stories, brilliant. Comedies, brilliant. You know, it's, yeah, it, for me, it was just perfect. It, it can, and, you know, it can go on for ages. It's much better than Bloody Simpsons, I'll tell you that. Simpsons, Simpsons are just run dry, whereas Futurama is just damn entertaining. So, I agree yeah. with that as well, but I think Futurama is running dry. I hate the new season. Really? Yes. Oh, I don't know. I, 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 quite like the, I quite like that they have made some progression in the fact that Fry and Leela's uh, relationship's actually going somewhere, finally. Slowly, but finally. Yes, but by that point, I completely stopped caring if they ever got together. <laughs> I always cared. I always still care. But what about Zoidberg, anyway? <laughs> yeah, it's Zoidberg. He's so forever alone. Zoidberg and Lilo would be a very odd ship. Oh, God. <laughs> Zoidberg and the Professor. <laughs> oh, that sounds weird. That ship that is bad and you should feel bad. That kind of happens. There's got, there's got to be some Zoidberg and Hermes somewhere. <laughs> so anyway, come on. Next question. Um, yes. Uh, Favourite animated I movie? Um, Wally. Yeah, definitely Wally. Um, wow. Again... Again, there was quite a few that I wanted to go with. Um, Akira, Akira is one I wanted to go with because you know it's huge influence it had on like, on like you know the anime world, on well just animation in general, both Western and Japanese, and obviously you know it brought like Japanese anime into the Western world really well. Um, but yeah, no, I went with Wally because it was just I love that film. It, it's it's beautiful. You know, it's it's a tragic. You know, it's quite a tragic film. You know, see, you know, it's such a bleak future, but it's it's a beautiful film story, and who can argue against that? Really, it's I lovely. Um, Plus robots and two thousand and one references. So yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Favorite episode. Oh, favorite episode. Joe, why did you put this question in really? Because I'm an evil cunt. Now continue. I agree, I hate you're an evil as cunt. Well. <laughs> I'll be gonna beat these out, by the way. Um, yeah. Uh, favorite episode. There's never in Western animation. There's never really been an episode that's really, you know, really hit me to the point where I've gone, "Wow, this is the best episode I have ever seen." There's never really been anything like that. If you want an episode that's uh, pulled on the heartstrings, pulled on the heartstrings, I'd say the Future Arm episode with this dog. That if if it's, if you've seen that episode, you can understand Jurassic why. Jurassic Park. Yes, I refuse to ever watch that episode because it's so incredibly upsetting. I mean, Fox, I, I get I get really emotional over happens. dogs. Sorry. Uh Fox received complaints about that episode because from people who expected to tune in to Futurama and get a nice, you know, fun little 20 minutes of comedy and instead ended the episode in tears. Exactly. No, no, they legitimately but... got complaints. Exactly. I mean, I get really emotional over dogs. I'm a real sop when it comes to them. For me, that was just, oh, that was one of the most tragic things I have ever seen. So that is definitely not my fact. It's emotional and it's powerful, but it's, no, no, nobody can love that episode. But, you know, in the... Well, I suppose I actually want to say one of my favourite episodes, shouldn't I? Um, in the end, I just, I just winged it and went with uh, 
well, again, Futurama, uh, the episode with the Amazon with ladies, because that was just awesome. I mean, Snoop's... Yeah, can I turn my fave into the robot's hands at idle play things? <laughs> oh, which one's that one again? That was... That's the one with the robot. That was the last one when the season was meant to end, then, of course, then the movies came out, but that was meant to be the actual ending to the show. Oh, yeah, is that the one, uh, the... Is that the devil one? Yes, that's when Fly gets the robot devil's hands. Yeah. I love yeah, that, that was episode. Really nice that was. That was a good. Ep- that was a damn good episode, to be fair. Yeah. But no, I'm, I think I think it's more just the fact that with the Amazon episode, I I just I think uh, season three of Future Arm was the first season I got on VHS uh, before the others, so I just ended up watching that one over and over again. So as a previous and boy, you know, naturally watch the one that's got the giant sex ladies that kill guys with sex. What's not to love about it? I mean, apart from the death, I suppose. <laughs> death isn't that great, but the sex seemed good from what I'm assuming happened in the episode. Death Snoo. I was like, yeah, Death by Snoo Snoo. Death by P- Crush Palmies. What can go wrong? Perfect. Now, moving on. Next one. Um, Favourite short. Oh, Favourite short. Um, I'm ne- I'd never really seen a lot of shorts, so it was... It was kind of hard for me to really think of one, but in what the end, I kind of just the country doctor. Yeah, in the end, I just went with Vincent's, um, <clears throat> the Tim Burton one. Anybody know it? Mm. Yep. Oh yes, I know that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah the uh, the one of uh, Lou, very loosely based on um, Tim uh, Tim Burton's childhood. Where he must have been, where he was like a huge fan of Vincent Price, and by God, he got Vincent Price from narrating him. That's pretty damn good. Mm. And like, well, it was done in the eighties, early eighties, I think. I'm not sure. Mm. Uh, yeah. Eighty two, I eighty two, I believe. And um, yeah, it was you know at the time the animation was brilliant. Mm. And yeah, it was a, it was a really nice, well put together short. But like I said, I haven't seen many shorts, so I can't really judge. Okay. Um, Ewling Kitten Award for a series that needs more love. <laughs> I am probably going to be hated for this. Uh, My Little Pony. Friendship is magic. That has plenty uh, of love. <laughs> yeah, well, hear me out. Okay, basically, my mindset here is, yes, it does have a huge fan base, and it is loved world. It is loved by a lot of people worldwide. However, anyone anyone who isn't a fan of My Little Pony hates fans of My Little Pony. And what this what this show needs is to stop being hated on. Basically, you know, it, you know, if you're not a fan of it, so so be it. It's like um, an anime society uh, last year. Um, a couple of the, a couple of the committee members wanted to show an like an episode of Marley Pony at the best of the West screening. However, ev- uh, in the end, they decided not to because they were worried that people would walk out on on the best of the West screening. Mm. Now, people, sh- you know, we shouldn't have to be worried of that happening. You know, if people don't like, if there's any other show, and um, you know, nobody would care. They'd be like, okay, if people don't like it, they'll just put up with it. But apparently we have to make a special exception with My Little Pony. And that shouldn't be the case. So, yeah, I, mm. I think, you know, yes, My Little Pony's got a great, big, huge love, you know, fan base, but it needs to stop being hated on. So that's my answer. Opinions? Um, that's fine by me. I mean, I can see. that's fine by me. I've got no comment on that. Show all at least anything. Um, hmm? Oh, about ponies. I think yeah. it, 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 I do find that very annoying. The and it is typically male knee jerk reaction, which is oh, I don't care if all these people like it. It's girly and not my thing. Therefore, it's bad. I'm so not gonna. I'm... I'm not gonna lie. That was my mindset as well. Cause Joe told me to see it. Kerry told me to see it. And I was just like, no, I didn't even see the original My Little Pony. I did not want to know. Then I finally sat down, and after 
three episodes, I was hooked. <laughs> That's exactly how it was with me. I'd been having friends uh, begging me to watch it for a whole year, and I refused. I, I thought, I, I know what's going to happen, Michael. The second you watch an episode or something, you're going to get hooked, so avoid it, Michael. Do not do it whatsoever. Do not touch it. Yeah. So don't worry, uh, it's not just the guys. The girls are avoiding it as well. <laughs> yeah, I got tricked into watching it. So. It does seem to be males in general who have a more violent reaction to it. Yeah. In kind of, I oh, I'm going to walk out on this. If you show it, then, you know, mm. I won't. What then, you know, I'll dislike it. And I'm going to refer to Lindsay Allis, the nostalgia chick here, one of the things, which is, you know, if there was... You know, so what, what's got the internet in some state over My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, it's not that it's grown men watching a children's cartoon, because as we know, grown men are okay with this, it's that they're watching a cartoon for girls. Oh no, it's silly. Consi- well, considering the, um, like, I think, you know, they did one of those kind of audience research um, surveys, and they found out that the biggest fan, like, the biggest uh, group set, like age group of people watching it, was 18 to 25 year old males not females like the the biggest group watching it were our age males mm. and it's like you know a, a show that's supposedly for girls is being more loved by men than women it's a good show that's so, yeah it's a damn good show and it's addictive as hell worryingly addictive but yes okay sorry go on that, that's all right um, the Cosmic Retcon Award for series you most want scoured from existence. That's thing. I'm gonna. F- I don't think any show should be scoured from existence. Um, mainly because yeah, even if I don't like a show, I'm not gonna hate it. You know, I don't think it should be you know wiped off the earth. I just think I'm, you know I'm just not gonna watch it. Um, so obviously, I feel like a hypocrite after all while saying you know for the last question. But if I did have to pick something, I would probably go with, just because I really did not like this show whatsoever, and people found me weird for not liking it, uh, The Flintstones. I just, I just totally never, I, just, I really did not get the appeal about The Flintstones. It was just incredibly dull. The characters were dull. The plots were dull. It was just everything. It was like an incredibly bad Simpsons. It was, I mean, obviously, yeah, it was done before Simpsons, but mm. yeah, it was just, yeah, it was just incredibly dull, and I never saw the appeal of it. My mates around me all thought I was weird. You know, they saw the thing as some kind of national treasure. I, I, I kind of understand that. I kind of understand because I watched probably every single episode of the Flintstones, but um, I don't actually recall ever in enjoying it but i would sit and watch it but i do that, remember that, being extremely bored <laughs> that, that's pretty much, i mean i saw a fair i've seen a fair few episodes and my grand like my grand tragically took me my first time going to star city which was early on when it first opened um my grand tragically took me to go see uh the flintstones at rock vegas or whatever it was fever rock vegas no oh, i remember yeah, that, that, that bloody sequel to the other rubbish live action film and um yeah no it was terrible and it just it was just a huge reminder of oh yeah i forgot i really hate the flintstones don't i thanks gran for that you <laughs> not only have you already traumatized me from roller coasters you've now traumatized me by the flintstones thanks gran <laughs> as much as i love you gran you really do mess up my life <laughs> Okay. Yeah, anyway, um, away from childhood trauma. Let's go on. Moving on now. Okay, now we're going to be entering the realm of speculation with the series the series you'd most like to be made. Um, first, we're going to be talking about adaptations. Um, the one you gave me here was a little bit interesting, Mike. Um, yeah. Dad's Army. Yeah. Ooh. Um, basically, I... When, I, when I read that question, I could not think... And, What's the, the naturally the first thing you do is like a gorm. You just start looking around. And I noticed I noticed like my D, the DVD collection right to the left of me, and I just want to turn to the left. And the first thing that caught my eye was the dad, my dad's army box set, and I was like, "Nah, that's stupid." And then I stopped and thought and went, "Okay, yeah, it is stupid. I can't change that fact, but I, I 
damn it, I loved, I loved Dad's Army. It was, it's probably my favourite sitcom. Yeah, I loved it, and I would love to have seen more adventures of the, of the, um, of the, of the home front. Really, you know, I, it was just, it was just a, such a fun series. So I'd love to see that. But at the mm. same time, I realised again, Michael, you're being, you're being a th- thick. That's so, right. as another op, as another um, one, I would put down Scott Pilgrim because I'm a huge, mm. huge Scott Pilgrim fan, and I can. Conver- so much so that I converted pretty much my entire course at college into loving Scott Pilgrim. So I, I loved it before it was mainstream, basically. Um, there was an animated short of Scott Pilgrim, actually. Yes, yes, um, there is an animated short which follow, which did follow um, a short sequence of the actual um, graphic novels. That wasn't really part mm. of the film. It didn't really do yeah. much for you know for the film's part. It was just there as a nice little extra. Um. But yeah, I mean, if they if they like animated it like that, I think it'd be awesome. If they followed the graphic novels, that is. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love I love the graphic novels. I have two copies of the uh, the the sixth volume. I'm that sad. Um, one signed by Brian Lee O'Malley. I went all the way up to London just to get that. That's pretty good, actually. Nice. That is dedication. I know. Um, and with that. Charles probably going to try and steal it from you. Oh joy! But yeah, no, I mean, I love, I love the graphic novels. I, I love the um, love the film as well. The film's great. I thought it was really, really good. Well done. You know, I knew it wasn't going to be. A, it was. I knew it wasn't going to be a masterpiece. But if you're a fan, you're going to really like it. Apart from these odd one or two bits in which they kind of, you know, I understand they had to kind of shrink it down. But I had no idea what the hell was going on with their uh, with the eyes uh, Scott's battle against the twins, where yes. these gigantic electric yetis, uh, giant you know electric yeti was taking on giant electric dragons, twin dragons. Mm. Rule of cool, rule of cool, Mike. It was uh, it was weird. It was a bit weird even for me. I mean, I love weird, but that was just weird. Okay. It's also amusing because the twins were meant to have more screen time, but the actors who played them at the time, I don't think they knew a single word of English, so that kind of went out the window. <laughs> that would obviously make it quite tricky. I was quite looking mm-hmm. forward to the, um, I was quite looking forward to the robot fights, especially the drunken robot fights. That would be quite entertaining. I don't think the thing is, um, when the Scott Pilgrim film went into production, I think. Only about volume three had actually been written by then, and so the reason why the end of the film differs so wildly to the end of the series is because Edgar Wright just had Brian Lee O'Malley write like write like a basic synopsis of what he was planning to do. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I mean, they got the. Go on. Oh, the, the, I finished. All oh, right, sorry. Uh, well, they got the um, they got the ending pretty spot on. You know, it was the identical was identical really. Although, I mean, um, yeah, you know, the fights obviously. If you watch on the DVD, you'll see they actually filmed two endings: one in which Scott ends up with Ramona, and one in which Scott ends up with um, uh, knives. Chow. Uh, knives. Chow. What the chow? Oh, I don't, I don't know what the chow from. Um, yeah, no. Um, yeah, I've seen, I've seen the alternate. And I just didn't like it because I just want him to end up with Ramona. Um, I know she's a bit of a bitch, but still, it's got the Ramona. Thing, I think that in the the thing the graphic novel did better was that because it had more time to develop Scott and Ramona, it had more time to hammer home the moral that if you want the hot girl, you need to stop being a dick, and she yeah. needs to stop being a dick as well. While the film, I don't know, I think the, the yeah, film it might have worked song. better if film had just been a completely independent thing and had Scott end up with knives because that was more in keeping with the character development he'd gone through in the film. Yeah. Well I suppose that's what we had the alternate ending for, I guess. But mm. but yeah, either way, my point was that um I'd quite like to see an animation an animated adaption of graphic novels that cover the graphic novel plot. Because I've got a bit more time to work with than the film. So Okay. Okay. And and now uh, the original ideas. Oh, yeah, bloody hell, Joe. <laughs> you don't have this easy, do you? No, no, I don't. Oh, don't hell. worry, we're thinking about replacing him. 
Yeah. <sighs> Please do. Yeah. I have a it's unicorn plushie happening. right here that seems to do a good job. Okay, mm. unicorn, think... you're the new Joe. Yeah. Does... I think your stock yeah. puppet would be just as good. Does the unicorn uh, plushie like go? <sighs> Though. <laughs> it can say fair enough. Oh, that'll do. Either way, its name is now Charlie the Unicorn. Charlie. Charlie. It's a anyway. black steel. Magical amulet, Charlie. The magical amulet. <laughs> anyway, yeah, Fair no, me. sorry. Yes. <laughs> Anywho, um, original plot. Oh, bloody hell. Okay. Um, I'll try to remember what I, what I wrote down for you, Joe. Um, I think I put down something like um, a plot of like, just because I can't be bothered to really think it out much, um, a uni student who um, is given the powers of the devil. Um, like the orig- like the previous devil, like dying in battle or something, and just come transferring his powers across. And it's how he kind of how the guy kind of copes with it. It'd kind of be a mixture between if I had to, um, kind of a mixture between supernatural, Reaper, and Smallville, I guess, because it'd kind of have like the teen drama of Smallville, you know, of the you know the super powered guy, you know. Having to kind of keep it secret, having his you know friends and family able to draw and deal with this, and you know all the you know, kind of oh, kind of messes with his love life kind of thing. Um, it had like the supernatural elements of all the fighting, and the, you know perhaps the, maybe not all the blood and gore, but it had like you know quite a bit of bowling and you know tragedy and stuff here and there. Um, I suppose it'd have a bit of like comedy, like Reaper, um, and keeping it quite down to earth, keep it quite on location. You know, we don't want him training. You don't want him like say how it is a supernatural training all across Britain. You want him kind of mm. like homebound kind of stuck in at university really. So yeah, I guess that's the idea. Just a guy with devil, an ordinary guy who's given the powers of the devil and then he copes with it. Okay. That do. Uh, that that be fine. Thank you. And uh, with that, we end. Your introduction, Mike. Oh, can I go now? <laughs> now you and have now to stay for the rest. To... Yeah. Oh, bugger. Now we move on to uh, Miraculous Ladybug. Oh, uh, yeah. Miraculous Ladybug. Hopefully. Uh, no, I didn't think the PV thing was too bad. Sorry. I don't think. Shall we give a bit of background on what Miraculous Ladybug oh, yeah, is? That, yeah, that probably helps. Yeah, go on. I think we'll okay. leave it to you, Alice. <laughs> okay. Well, um, Miraculous Ladybug is a series set to air in 2013 and the reason we're discussing it now is because the PV was recently released and it's gotten certain people very very excited including myself what Miraculous Ladybug is is a joint effort between a French animation studio called Zagtoon and Method Animation with Toei Animation a Japanese company most well known, well I wouldn't say they're most well known for their magical girl stuff but they are the company who animated Sailor Moon, um, original Magical Girl series, um, ma- um, Magical Witch Sally. Uh, they have done a lot of Magical Girl shows. And so they've teamed up with a French studio to make a Magical Girl cartoon. Does anyone want me to take over and explain the actual plot of Ladybug? Uh, just, yeah, of course. Okay, Ladybug um, is about a girl who has a... Pe- a ma- a magical set of earrings in the shape of ladybugs and their power they give the user the power of luck but the only downside is you can only use them as an act of selflessness which means you can't walk into a shop and get the winning lottery ticket it has to be for someone else uh but so far i don't really know the actual plot of what's going on but we do the impression that there are Spirits going about that give people powers. Obviously, we got a boy who's a cat boy, essentially. Who mm. apparently the fans have ni- nicked. Yeah, the fans have actually nicknamed him Felix, even though no one knows anything about the show yet. Mm. Well, and his, of his, we have... the name, his name has been. Um, his superhero identity is Le Chat Noir. Mm. Ah, how so... that's so. Uh... Yes, but then of course it does the whole awkward of the high school girl has a crush on the cute high school boy, and they're. When they're both in costume, the boy has a crush on the girl, but she's not interested, so their relationship is complicated. 
And we so far know two villains. One is the main Three. villain. Oh, well, I only know two. One of them is the main villain. My... That's Pigeon Man. <laughs> Pigeon Man, who is amazingly camp. There's also a sort of third. There's also a third mem- member, sort of third sort of character, who seems to be sort of this guy in white with a sort of butterfly theme almost. And he constantly goes rocks around with a blimp. A butterfly man! Yay! We're going through all the animals. Yeah. Oh, he seems a bit like a mysterious, what like um, a bit like Russell Meyer in Princess Tutu. In the the moment he'll just observe. And then it'll turn out he's some really, really messed up individual. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, but, but he tells the protagonist's name is Mad Sheng. Um, yeah. yeah. So, guys, can you tell me more about this mythical pigeon man? I know <laughs> you were ta- when we were only discuss it talking yesterday. He was mentioning pigeon man, and how nobody can quite beat him. And like <laughs> he's he's very peculiar. Um, Go on. Trying to best describe him. <laughs> Basically, think of um, uh, Will from Will and Grace dressed up in a pigeon costume and then being able to control pigeons. That's the kind of character that they've managed to make. Oh yes, my! Um, yes. Yes, Joe. Who was that? French supervillain who we keep on mocking in Ultimate Spider-Man. Oh, Batrock the Leaper. Yeah, I think it's kind of like him. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, it sort that, of makes that's... sense in that, you know, if you really wanted if you wanted a supervillain who actually stood a chance of taking over Paris or London, it, controlling the pigeons mm. is a good way to go. Well, yeah. that's you he's not like, convincing me to watch it or keep away from it, really. It worries me. Yeah. Are well, you not sure when your pigeon's biggest downfall is the fact people like to put spikes on top of their buildings? That's their one weakness. <laughs> That's cool. Mm-hmm. Tony, all I've got in my head is like him just attack, him just having like sending pigeons off to crap on people. Yes. That's, That's Ooh, all I all could imagine in my head is like <laughs> take this lady and just <laughs> about a, a thousand a thousand <laughs> shits flying towards her. <laughs> oh dear. But then there's also this mime character who sort of is going around sort of blowing buildings up and so on and so forth, a big hammer and so on and so forth. Because mimes are evil. Mm. Mm. Oh. Is, um, like there's just agreement there. Yes, yes they are. <laughs> I, mean, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say evil, more just sort of morally Free. ambiguous. They don't, they don't fit into the black and white world worldview. They kind of follow their own morally... He's a mime! He's bloody black and white! Ah, but that's the reason why he follows his own moral grey area. I worry your feelings about the Joker are getting in the way of your feelings about this mime. The Joker wasn't a mime, though. He was anything but a mime. I know, but it's a similar kind of clown, creepy clown face. Mm. That's fair enough. Mimes, clowns, same thing, except one of them's been drained of colour. So is the mime kind of like a psych... Path. Exactly, or Mr. Mime is, he, is, like is, is he quite one of those more kind of serious kind of mastermind kind Mr. of guys? Mime. <laughs> he, he look, or that look, kind of like just stupidity. He, he looks like he's actually going to be a proper sort of threat to the characters because of the fact he's sort of going around actually blowing up build, the buildings of Paris. And yes, on the visual side, Paris looks gorgeous. Oh yes. Oh, I really yeah, do I like. I really do like the backgrounds and everything they set up. I also get the feeling sort of a Cyber Six sort of vibe every time I see Ladybug leap off the buildings because it looks like Cyber Six in that regard. Mm. 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 I think yeah, if, I definitely agree with you. If there was one thing I really liked about the PV, it was the animation. It was gorgeous. Even if you don't, even if you you know not really bothered about about what's happening in it, just appreciate it for its art. Just look it's at lovely. Just look at the pretty pictures. Yeah, exactly, and, pretty much. And at least the music or the music in the trailer, it's it's a wonderful score. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. Mm. Yeah. It's really nice, yeah. It really does fit with the whole fi- theme of it. I actually think one of the best looking bits is actually um that bit where all the pigeons are flying out and it's right next to the Eiffel Tower. And that sort of you get that real lovely sense of scale with it. Oh pigeon man, you strike again. Yeah. <laughs> you strike our hearts and our eyes. Uh, and our hats. 
Yes. Yes. But yes, um, uh, Alice, you've done quite extensive research on this. Is there anything you want to add? I've done quite extensive research into magical girls. <laughs> it probably might be more accurate. But well, I think the reason for people sitting at home going, well, why are France doing this? I mean, you know, it's in keeping with the influence anime is having on Western culture, but surely someone is thinking, well, wouldn't it make more sense to do a mech show? Surely that will appeal to more people. Thing is, France loves magical girls. This is this is a, a thing. There have been a lot of magical girl cartoons only licensed in France. They barely changed their Sailor Moon dub. They love magical girls, so I'm surprised it took them so long to make their own, to be honest. Mm. So... But I, I suppose it's more just about the fact that um, they didn't actually have, they don't didn't feel like they had the uh, the know-how in order to do it. I mean, I know they had a lot of um, they had a lot of love for the genre, but I'm just wondering how much they uh, sort of how much they feel that they're up for create for a French company to actually create one of their own. And I think um, actually, if we go back to a previous series, I think um, this could be sort of a sequel, and I it could actually tie in quite nicely to um, Oban Star Racers. Cause that... Yes, that was another French animated film that worked alongside a Japanese studio. Yeah, and I think it's sort of a sequel venture. And I'm just wondering whether this, if this is successful, this will open up, open the floodgates for potentially more sort of uh, East-West crossovers. And hopefully... Oh, really? Oops. and hopefully we'll end up getting a Series, so a series which is based out of London and sort of animated by a British company. Fingers crossed. I would love that. that to happen, but unfortunately, the anime influence on Brit uh, on Britain is a lot harder to track. In the we don't get anime cartoons shown on BB on CBBC. So what we we might be able to get a miraculous ladybug dubbed in English and shown on you know be on shown on BBC, but Otherwise, you just don't see anime in Britain unless you take to the internet, mm. which is very so, annoying. Yeah. All, you, all you really seem to get is, um, say, like the late night stuff on, car- on like one of Cartoon Network channels, mm. and even that, and it's, a... it's usually just something that's say, like you know, Dragon Ball Z or Naruto a repeat or whatnot, mm. and that's usually coming through from the states. But yeah, exactly. So, what I would think, what I think would be really amazing. Is if like BBC Four or something decided to, you know, at ten, eleven o'clock in the evening, show something like Paranoia Agent. Mm. Oh my! Because <laughs> think how good Paranoia Agent is, or even just like you know, if BBC Four decided to nine o'clock in the evening show an episode of Gankutsuo. Mm. Because I think BBC mm. Four or BBC Three could premiere that kind of thing, as they are known for alternative things. Yeah. That sometimes end up being of surprisingly good quality. So that's my suggestion. People of the BBC, if you're listening, I have a list of anime recommendations you are free to contact me for. <laughs> we have hard drives and everything. Exactly. No, I mean, um, we have licensed DVDs that we bought legally. <laughs> yeah, like that, yes. Yeah. And to anyone who's still debating whether to watch the a French animated series, Really, you cannot turn your nose up at French animated work. They've done Witch, they've done Oban Star Racers, they, they did have Code Lyoko! They did Code Lyoko, <laughs> they even did um, Galaxy Football, and they've even done all the stuff, the Avengers of Sonic the Hedgehog, Tintin, and even Garfield, it's Inspector Gadget. Really, this should be worth watching. Mm. And I seem to think they write very good female characters. It was a France animation studio that did Persepolis. Mm. Ooh. It was, yeah. But on the other hand, it did have quite a good source material to work with. Mm. True. Yeah. But just in general, France seems to take graphic, graphic novels and animation more seriously than we do in Britain. Mm. So. Right. That's me packed up and ready to move over to Paris. So, 
<laughs> well, really, if you're an artist and you want to go into comics, you literally have to go to fans because there's this village that is just dedicated to all comics. And if you want a job, you have to move there. Mm. <laughs> so you may. Okay, so that was Miraculous Ladybug. And now on to final disc- bit of our discussion. Uh, Dragon Dragons Riders of Berk, which is a sort of sequel si- sequel animated series to uh, How to Train Your Dragon. Even though that's that movie's already got sequels in the works. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, thoughts on this? Because I yeah yeah yeah. I felt okay. obliged. So, I'm, not- I'm not gonna lie. Um. Okay, if you're willing to overlook the fact, obviously the quality in animation has gone down because they no so longer have the budget. They, yes. Really, this, should have been just, this should have been 2D animation because it's really obvious this is downplayed in texture. But um, looking beyond that, it has a good setup. Dragons are now part of the Viking society. They have an even less food shortage than before. And now they have to accommodate for these dragons who... Besides killing, they don't really know how they work and how to live with them. So it answers a lot of questions in the fact society is changing, people are changing, but the execution is terrible. We do not need, we do not need an old man to just go, I'm the evil guy who's, guy who's pointing out these dragons are evil and should be caged. No, no. And also I am inexplicably British when everyone else is Scottish or American. Yes, but we don't need this guy. We don't need anyone to be the bad guy here. This is a real-life situation, sort of, and it has real issues, and the characters should be driving the story, but it feels like they're just following the plot. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you say about, you know, you say about, you know, a huge plot, you know, talking about plots and stuff, but it doesn't seem, there doesn't seem to be much long longevity, longevity about it, really. Yeah. It doesn't seem like it's going anywhere. It doesn't seem well, it doesn't seem like it can go anywhere. You'll just have like, you know, you just have those kind of really kind of generic like each episode will focus on a different character. You know, it's like, Oh, what's gonna happen now? Oh, uh, one of the dragons is gonna be ill. What's gonna happen next? Oh, the twins are gonna have a little bit of a bicker. And they're gonna have a falling out, and that's gonna affect the dragon. The dragons will be upset. They're gonna make up. Everything's better. Blah blah blah. And each episode, you know, it's just gonna be a different character. Story's done. And then what are you left with, really? It it just, you know, I mean, it's, don't get me wrong. It, it was a it was a nice enough show to watch, really. You know, um, mm. yeah, the first two episodes of that which were what I saw, they seemed nice. Um, you know. Like you said, yes, it's gone. The animation's gone down a bit. The quality's gone down, but it's you know it's going to. And to be honest, I haven't seen the film in a, you know about a year or so. So you know it, it doesn't it doesn't seem to bother me as that much. Unless you watch the, the the film just before you watch the show, I don't think you're going to be too disappointed really. For a TV show, it didn't seem that bad. You know, it seemed quite nice. That's exactly my problem with it. In that, if this was an original concept TV show. I would be fine with it. I would, you know, just sit there and go, yes, this looks like a good show. I'll recommend it to Lizzie's Little Brothers. It looks good. But as it... as How to Train Your Dragon is one of my favourite films. I think it's just beautiful. And then for this show to come along that's just so formulaic and generic and so dull when you have this brilliant, perfect thing that was How to Train Your Dragon that was such a good step in a good direction for DreamWorks. And then they have to bring it down with, hey, we're DreamWorks, we still have to franchise the heck out of this and just beat it into the ground until it becomes mediocre. Yeah, it just feels like they're just making a segue between the two films just for the sake of it. Exactly. There doesn't seem to be, you know, there doesn't seem to be any kind of like, you know, back... You know, back plot really it doesn't seem to be like there's anything lurking, any bad guys lurking in the shadows or anything. It what made doesn't, House Train Your Dragon it doesn't work seem like though, it's going to go anywhere. No, because what made House Train Your Dragon work so well is that it wasn't there wasn't a villain. It was just about a boy trying to find his place, you know, with a dragon bro and being really awkward. But in this cartoon, Hiccup's gone from being an awkward, likable, sweet protagonist to a, you know, generic American. Yeah. know-it-all show-off 
who always saves yeah. the day in the end. Two Plus has become has been degraded to just a pet. He isn't a character anymore. He just turns up in the background, nuzzles Hiccup sometimes. That's about all he does now. Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, like I said, the first one or two episodes, um, yeah, I'm sure you'll find some enjoyment out of them. But as a series, I think it's going to suck. It's just, you know, it's not going to go anywhere. And it's just going to, at the end of it, you're going to be really disappointed that nothing happened. And All you're, just, doing you're going to look back and go, hold on, I was actually quite bored. So, I will give him this. The animation on the hair is really nice. Yeah, yeah. But everything else, no. Toothless now looks more plastic than reptilian. All that careful yeah. work into Toothless's body language, gone. Mm. Now he's just a big cat instead of, you know, having his own physiology and own behavior and movements. Now he's just a big cat with wings. I um, think we went from like, the film, which is brilliant. You know, like I said, it was brilliant. Um, how we, we saw, we saw like, you know, we for the first time we didn't just see like, you know, uh, you know, one or two characters a bit of injuries here and there, dude. Like the main character lost his legs. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he, he lost one of his freaking legs. <laughs> That's like, oh my god. Show of hands, yeah. how many times did any of you keep forgetting Hiccup lost his leg during these episodes? You can't see uh, me, but my hand is up. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of a dumb question. <laughs> I don't know because I mean, you could kind of hear a slight stump and stuff. You know, you could kind of hear a tiny, tiny thud when he'd walk and stuff. It wasn't too bad. Aside from, like, I, I one moment so when he goes, oh, oh, man, I've took my leg off. Yeah. Really... He, 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 he seems to have um, coped remarkably well with losing a limb. Yeah. I'm not saying that, you know, obviously I'm not saying that losing a limb is the end of the world, people. I mean, the Paralympics just finished, so. It, it's something you get over, you know, with time. Yeah. You know, it's something that takes time to, you know, you deal, you learn to deal with it. And it just seems like, you know, in in the space of whatever happened between the show and the film, the film and the show, it was like, oh right, everything's fine again. They're fine, yeah. it's, it's, fine it's an dandy. occupational hazard. Exactly. I mean, there's nothing really explicitly said. Oh look, the main character has has, you know, has got a metallic leg. You know, has got a prosthetic leg. Nothing was really mentioned in the TV show about it. It just like it's just like oh yes um, if you remember if you remember what happened in the film you remember you might you know remember that or you might just spot that he has a leg and go, oh yeah I forgot yeah he, he lost his leg didn't he because that's how it was with me I just kind of spotted it and I was like oh yeah I forgot about that but if you're just watching the show you know or you just don't have that great of memory you're gonna be like well you know, just a bit confused about oh yeah he's lost a leg I mean hopefully they might you know talk about it in they might deal with with him when episode later on in the series have some kind of flashback kind of episode. Oh no, I hated it when they had a flashback to the film because it just drove home how much better how much better quality the film was. Yeah. When I mean, you had I a flashback put... to that beautiful moment when Toothless touches Hiccup's hand and I was just sitting there like, don't do that. Just don't. Yeah, You're I just guess, reminding but... me how good the film was. They did wrong, though, not, not the film grey kind of effect over it, which did kind of, did a nice job of kind of you know, make it in. It didn't seem quite too bad. You, know, you couldn't tell, like, oh my god, that's great quality to, oh, well, rubbish quality. You know, he did kind of blend it in a bit so he didn't feel quite as bad. It's kind of like softening the punch almost. So, that didn't, you know, but yeah, I do agree with you, though. It, you know, it was kind of tragic to watch. What, may, what would have made it a, a good but Because I like the idea behind it in that, you know, trying to see how the society adapts to having these dragons now as allies instead of the enemies they've for four centuries but it's just done so dull and generic and boring and you know you could have done an, a really good first episode with a parallel between Hiccup learning how to live with his new leg and the society learning to live with the dragons but nope no Hiccup just is amazing now and perfect and, and not dating Astrid which confused me. Yeah, I, I, mean, I know, but I, mean, I suppose they weren't, you know, they weren't going to go straight into it. They weren't going to, like, have some huge romance going, were they, in the, t- in the kids' TV <laughs> show? No, true, but at least some, like, mention uh, they could have, like, held hands or something. I'm not asking for a series focused on them, but if they could have been, like, Scott and Jean Grey, like, in the background, 
just yeah, yeah they're together. Yes, it's just seems Astrid's um, not the sort of girl who'd kiss and then run. You know I suppose. I mean? Also, they might be kind of obliged to not really show too much on it if they're going to, you know, and they're going to kind of go a bit more into it with the film, with the with the sequel, I suppose. But it's film still sequel. ridiculous. They have this episode where they are stuck in the mountains, and Hiccup and Astrid are freezing, and one of the characters makes a gag about the fact, oh, you two should have cuddled up and kept yourself warm, and they blush when you go, oh, yeah, we so would have not do that. That's a stupid thing to say. You two kissed at the end of the film in front of the entire fighting population, and now you two suddenly have cold feet. <laughs> it, it makes no sense. That's the kind of, you know, the awkward behaviour is the kind I'd expect from, like, well, to go back to Code Lyoko, or and Yumi and their epic will-they-or-won't-they tension. But like you said, Hiccup and Astrid have kissed. They like it was pretty obvious that, you know, they were gonna get together. They like exactly. each other. Okay. Now Astrid Move on next has step. like zero character development. All her character development for the film is gone. Mm. Now she's yeah, just no, a it, it is that's actually no, you've pulled on a really good point there. It does almost feel as if they've taken a huge step back. It feels like, you know, the whole you know, the character development, um, the plots, everything. It seems like everything's sort of, you know, the times, but the chronologically, everything's moved forward, but in, you know, everything else just seems to have taken a huge leap backwards. You know, it's like we're having to yes. go through some stuff all over again. Yeah, this show didn't need a big bad. I mean, it obviously doesn't, but it doesn't even. But what it needs is to. It, it has an entire island to. Adventure. It has. It's trying to introduce new cast, but it's not building background. The the other kids themselves aren't getting any screen time with their dragons and growing relationships with them. And I like the beginning of the premiere when it's when hiccups says some people aren't going to change their opinion on dragons. No, they're not. People have lost families to dragons. They've killed dragons for sport, and they keep making jokes about the fact, oh, yeah, remember that time when we used to slaughter these guys? Ah, good time. You do not need a film for the show if you just wanted to get these people who seriously do not like dragons, who are scared of dragons and don't want them near the population. That is a good show in itself, and it's a very mature one at that. That could be the, the next film. Yeah, I think that would have made film. a good film in and of itself. Yeah, I suppose, I suppose the problem is so which... we, we almost feel obliged to try and defend the animators, aren't we? You know, we're actually trying... As much as we don't like, you know, you know, we don't mind... I think what we can kind of agree on is that the TV show, it's all right, but it should be better. Mm. And we and what we're doing, we're pretty much defending the show. We're coming up with all these excuses to try and defend it. When really it should, it, we shouldn't need to be defending it. It should have been better. DreamWorks, this show, should, this show shouldn't have been made. Really, DreamWorks no. should yeah, just much. stick with the films. That and you know, what confuses me about the series, if they insisted on making the series, why didn't they go closer to the books and just translate some of Hiccup's <laughs> adventures from there? Because you have a whole very good book series about Hiccup and his dragon and you know the, yes. the rubbish and, and the adventures he has but no dreamworks yes, even that even have his titles, even have titles like how to be a pirate how to be a viking how to speak dragon which is basically putting more s's in your sentences but those titles alone have plot to them you can already think of in your head there's one how to break a dragon's heart yeah is in which i think hiccup abandons in which like hiccup um, two of us for some reason have to abandon each other or something, but yeah, I suppose this probably show could have been better. But Dreamworks, yeah, I suppose probably what they were scared, what Dreamworks was scared of, was um, you know plonking you know the next part of the, of the you know the book or the uh, the story, the next part of the plot, into the TV show, and so any kid who never saw the TV show. They were worried that they might screw it up, and so that, that any kids who just go see the next sequel and haven't seen the TV show are going to be very confused. Like Kung Fu Panda, I suppose when that's you, why when you have that like this really dull, non-progressive. If it was something like Kung Fu Panda, where you know you had the movie, then you had this bonus DVD that went into the backstory of the Furious Five and their trials and whatnot, 
if you were just trying to build a whole bunch of setups so the audience knows what's happening on the island, what's happening with the Vikings and then the dragons, this would, and you want people to watch this, then jump into the second film so they have all the background te- detail, that's perfectly fine, but I'm not yeah. really learning anything from this. Yeah, but as, as just mentioned Kung Fu Panda, Kung Fu Panda would have made a good series. It is because a series. Kind of, is it? it, it that was there. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Was it, well, I never watched that, but from the sound of it, it would work better because there's much less at stake in Kung Fu Panda. It's a lot more comedic in just by its very nature. It's about a panda who does Kung Fu voiced by Jack Black. Well, to be honest, I think one of the series which would have worked quite well as a sort of one of the movies which would have quite worked quite well as a series would have been Megamind, if I'm honest. There is very, very little love in Megamind because, because well, I think it would have been interesting because of the fact you could have explored other cities and there could have been other heroes and other villains and so on and so forth. And Megamind, now being a hero at the end of the movie, spoilers, um, he has to deal with the fact he's got a former villain now being a hero. And I think that could have been quite an interesting yeah, show. Yeah, you could have had, like, you know, Megamind failing at being a hero in some episodes, which mm. are cliched, but, you know... Or the uh, society hating him and still thinks he's a villain and this whole yeah. hero is just long community service for him. <laughs> like, yeah. he tries to help a little old lady pick up pick up her drop shopping and she beats him off with her handbag. Hmm. <laughs> Then she goes into the subway to beat up a lion and his friends trying to get to Africa. <laughs> mm. Fucking Madagascar. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the best like example of like the movies and the TV show, you know, it working the whole kind of movies. Let's have a little TV show spin off. He do the. I think well, at least well, I from the ones I've seen at least, I think one of the best ones was Buzz Lightyear Star Command. Whether you like the show that. or not. Whether you like the show or not, which I really did, I did. Uh, um, you know, it, it was you know, it didn't need you didn't need to worry about any of like anything happening in the t- in the TV show, because it wasn't going to ruin your experience of Toy Story. You know, it was just a cartoon animation. Hell, it could have been a TV show within the film, for you know, you know, it could you know, mm-hmm. a bit of like TV film perception, I guess, really. Well, Buzz Lightyear is a popular fan base, so that could have been the show Andy's always watching. Well, yeah, exactly, and it, it, that's why it worked. It was really good because the animators could just do anything. Hell, they could have like had, you know, they could have potentially killed off Buzz Lightyear. Yeah, that'd be sad, and they wouldn't do it. Obviously, it'd be stupid to do so. Unlike but even the if they, even if they did, even if they did, yeah, you know, they could just say, well, it was just a TV show anyway. It was just a TV show within the film, so. Who cares? What it boils down to is DreamWorks won't take risks because they're money grubbing whores and are suffering for it. Yes, pretty much. So, I think we can all agree. Yeah. Yeah. So we can all agree that this this series is just basically yeah. Padding. It's not a it's it's not a words. bad show. It's not. It's just it should be so much better, and it should be a lot more interesting plot wise. And it just isn't. On that, I think we can uh, end the show. So it's um, uh, goodbye from me. And it's uh, goodbye from everybody else here. And uh, we've been the Spodcast. And we'll see you next time. Bye. 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 Nice.